Hi, welcome back to Guided Hacking. Today's video is going to be about data types. So we'll discuss how all the data types in C are actually stored and the differences and similarities between them. So C has these data types and these and these, and that's it. That's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Okay, anyways, if seeing those data types gave you a jump scare, don't worry, you'll realize how simple it actually is at the implementation level when we cover that later in the video. Um, we're just going to give an honorable mention to the standard int library, which has other data types, which are more or less just verbose names for existing data types that are defined using type depths. So C allows you to define a number as a short, an integer, or a long. The difference in names is just to distinguish between the different sizes of these numbers when they're stored. Short takes 16 bits to be stored, int takes 32 bits, and long takes 64 bits, assuming you're on a 64-bit system. So if you've ever seen something being declared with a long long and you don't know what it means, long long basically guarantees that your number is going to take 8 bytes, that is 64 bits even on a 32-bit system not magic it just stores the number as two four byte integers so it can use them on a 32-bit system easily today's video was sponsored by malcore.io scanning files for unknown threats has become essential yet the steps to accomplish this remains complex and demanding of resources malcore provides a new approach to malware analysis it was designed to automate this process and all of it can be done online within a sandbox which is able to process samples within seconds malcore hunting allows users to look for threat intel users will be able to hunt by providing the IP address or Yara rule. Malcor also provides a number of scan options to run on uploaded files. Standard scans include the ability to check for file similarities using code reuse, there's an option to analyze domains, and you can also perform analysis on an executable. Pro scans allow you to perform a binary diff onto binary files, and there's also an option that gives you access to Malcor's threat feed and allows you to gather data from it. But those are only some of the options, there are many more that you can choose from to fit your needs. Malcor offers affordable account options for you to choose from that would best cater to you. Different tiers gives you different file upload allowances, hunts, and scans. But you can start by signing up for a free account today at malcore.io. Anyways, let's talk about long. Assume we have this function called ret. It basically takes a number and multiplies it by two and returns that. This compiles into the following assembly code. And if you don't know, the LEA instruction basically computes whatever is inside the brackets, so you don't need an extra add or move instruction that you would need otherwise. Now, if you compile this into at and syntax, and I know, I know a lot of you hate it and think it's ugly, but here you can see that it uses the LEAQ instruction, and Q here stands for a quad word, which is basically four times a word and a word is just 16 bits. So keyword is for a 64-bit value and since we're using the long data type on a 64-bit system, this is what we expect. Since the return value is also long for this function, we see RAX being used here as it's the register which stores the return value and is a 64-bit register and the function parameter is also long, thus we're using the RDI as defined by the calling convention we're using. Now let's talk about ints, which if you remember are 32 bits in size. Um, we're going to take the same example. If we compile this, we get this assembly code and this time it's using the EAX register instead of the RAX register because the return type is int and EAX is a 32-bit register. Register. I'm not sure why it's using the RDI register instead of the EDI register, which is 32 bits, even though the parameter is of the type int. But this is what the compiler gets to decide, so we can't really say anything. With at and syntax, you can see that it uses the LEAL instruction, in which the L stands for long. This is different from the long in C, at least in 64-bit mode but it's there to specify a 32-bit operation. Now we're going to talk about sign and zero extension, which is also very important to understand. We're going to use the uint 8t data type from the standard int library for the following example as 8 bits doesn't take a lot of space to show on the screen. Side note, this uint 8t is just a typed up to inside car since a car is just an 8-bit number. Remember that it's unsigned. Okay, let's start by learning about the zero extension. So let's say I define this 8-bit integer x, now set it to 163, then create another integer variable called y with a type short, which means a 16-bit number, and then assign y to x. Now to convert this 8-bit unsigned variable x into 16-bit variable y, we need to add zeros to the left side of the number. Just like we do in the decimal system, we're adding zeros before an integer it doesn't change its underlying value. Now let's add the corresponding powers of two below the values and everything after two 
to the seventh is basically zero. And that's the zero extension. Now let's talk about the sign extension. But before talking about it, we need to talk about the difference between unsigned and signed numbers. So the unsigned version of any data type assumes that you're never going to store a negative number in that variable. So no extra space is needed to store sign related information about that number. And all eight bits can be used to represent numbers. So we can use all eight bits and get the maximum value of 255. However, in the case of signed numbers, the most significant bit or the bit you see on the leftmost side has the highest exponent, but in this case is negative. So the most significant bit holds the value negative 128, which is the lowest you can go with signed numbers. And when you set all the bits to one, you get negative one as negative two to the seventh is negative 128 as shown previously. And if you add everything from two to the power of zero to the sixth, you get 127 and 127 added to negative 128 is just negative one. Now let's look at an example. Assume that we have this 8-bit integer x and we set its value to negative 100. Keep in mind that this is a signed declaration as the u in the last declaration meant unsigned and all definitions are signed by default. Now let's declare another variable that's 16 bits called y and assign the value of x to y again. In this case, we'll need some form of extension to convert it to 16 bits from 8 bits so that it doesn't lose its sign. So how are we going to do this? Well, we'll do it by copying the sign bit to the most significant bit, which is negative 2 to the 15th, and remove the negative sign from the old most significant bit, which was 2 to the 7th. Now to verify if the value remains the same, we can calculate its value. Also, don't just assume that the eight consecutive ones result in the value negative 1, because the exponents are different than the ones I showed previously. Thus, the value is different and is negative 256. Now, since the old most significant bit is no longer representing the sign of the number, it's now equal to 256 if you sit down and calculate it. Now we also know that the upper bits are equal to negative 256 and if you add the 2 you'll get 100 which is the same value we had before the sign extension and hence we verified that it works. And this is how the sign extension works for every data type out there. Now let's look at the assembly examples to learn how this happens at a low level. Let's assume we have the following function defined in C. Also know that we're directly using the car data type instead of int a t so this is basically a signed 8-bit integer. If we compile this into assembly we get the following code. It's pretty simple, except you see the move SX instruction instead of the move instruction. Here, the SX stands for the sign extension, and DIL is just the lower eight bits of the RDI register, which contains the argument passed to this function, and AX is the lower 16 bits of the RAX register, which holds our return value. So this instruction will basically do what we defined earlier. It'll copy the number into the register and copy the sign bit to all the upper bits, such that the value of the number remains the same. Now this is even more clear in at and syntax where you can see that the instruction is move SBW, which means move sign byte to word. Here byte means 8-bit and word means 16-bit and that's what the instruction is doing basically. Now let's look at an unsigned or zero extension example. We have the same function except we're explicitly using the unsigned data types. We're not going to use the car data type here because writing unsigned car would take a lot of the screen. But yeah, this is the assembly of this function and we see move ZX being used instead of SX zx meaning zero extension. One thing you're going to notice is the fact that this instruction uses ex instead of the ax register which is weird because the return type is short which is 16 bits in size and ex is a 32-bit register. The reason behind this is the fact that in 64-bit mode the instruction's default operation size is 32 bits so you can't have the 16-bit destination operand. Also another thing you should know is whenever you sign or zero extend into any 32-bit register that extension is copied over to the upper 32 bits of the 64-bit version of the register. So if you zero extend a number from 8 or 16 bits to 32 bits, it basically turns into a 64-bit extension. Now before wrapping up, let's look at another way in which sign extensions can happen from 32 bits to 64 bits. So here we have our example function which basically takes a 32-bit integer with an input and sign extends to 64 bits and returns it. Now we have a new instruction in the assembly of this function which is CDQE and here CDQE stands for convert double word to quad word with sign extension. The instruction takes no operands, it only operates on the value of the EAX register and extends that and and that's really it. And that's as deep as we could go into a single video about integer data types. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to Guided Hacking.